Welcome back. So now that you've learned how to clone a repository, how to init a repository, how to change or save changes inside a repository using the add and the commit commands, we're going to try and modify the document and start just using Git as it's supposed to be used, where we start changing specific documents, changing the values inside them, and how do we then store that new information. It's, uh, it's very, very simple, and it's pretty much the same cycle that you were just experiencing. We're still going to do it locally. In videos to come very soon, I'm going to start actually working with the actual GitHub repository in the cloud. But this lesson will still just work locally on your machine. So let's start from using the, the desktop client. Since last time, no changes have been made. There's no changes at all in here. What I want to do now is I'm going to go in and I'm going to change the uh, document that we worked with last time. And the document I'm going to change is the text document 2. And here I'm going to start writing some information. Hi, everyone. I am Lars. I'll just save that. And right as I do the save, it'll show the change inside, um, inside the Git desktop client, GitHub desktop client. And here I can decide if I want to now push or commit this change to the version so they know that there's been a new change. I'm just going to change another file just to show you. So I'm opening one more file here. I'm going to open the, the three one as well and say, I like chocolate. Like this, I'll save it. And again, now I have two files that have been changed. Now notice that I can actually see the exact change that has occurred. That's very powerful so that I can know what I actually, if I want to send this, and if I want to send this now, if I want to store this in the next version of my um, Git, then I can actually say, I only want to store again, I only want to add text document to for the next version. So I'll do that and I'll say changed info in doc2. I'll do commit and now it's stored here. If I go to the last version, it's stored here. It added this guy. Now I also want to do it for the text document 3. So I'll add that guy and I'll say made changes to text doc3. Committed to the master again. That's how simple it is. So I'm just storing new versions here all the time. Let's try and make changes to both of them at once. I am Lars. I like cheese. It is true. I do like cheese. It's very tasty. I like chocolate and a beer now and then. And that's also true. I like a beer now and then. So I'll save this and now I have two different documents that are changed. But notice, this time, there's actually one line that's been removed and a new line's been added. That's not quite what happened, but because I changed information in this line and it knows it's the same line, then it'll kind of remove it and just add the new line. I hope that makes sense. But for document three, something else happened. I actually made a new change here as well. So we have a minus. This guy is how the old line looked. But now the new line looks like this. Notice it's the same, but it still tells me because I have a new line here. And then the other thing is I added a new line here. Uh, this time I want to commit both. So I'll set the check marks for both of them. Um, changed dark two and three. Remember the comments, they are kind of important. Okay, that was it for this lesson, just to show you how to make changes to your local repository files using the commit and the add command again, but this time we modified the actual contents inside the documents instead of just adding the documents. See you in the next lesson where we'll do the same with the terminal.